Hello everybody and welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to be leveraging the Chaos Cosmos to bring in additional assets that are going to round out our little scene here. It's going to be a really fun one because Chaos Cosmos is a really awesome feature that is available to you all for no additional expenses, as long as you own V-Ray that is. Now to access Chaos Cosmos, all you need to do is you need to go under the V-Ray menu up here and you need to bring up the Cosmos browser. And just like that, boom, you're in. Now, before we actually go in and we start importing all these materials and models and HDRIs and do all that fun stuff, let's just talk a little bit about what Chaos Cosmos actually is. So Chaos Cosmos is a sophisticated repository of smart V-Ray assets. And those assets currently are 3D models, materials, and HDRIs. And all of these assets can be very easily downloaded to your computer and very quickly imported into your scene. So you won't be breaking a sweat while doing this. Okay. So let's jump into the 3D models category here and let's take a look at what we have avail available to us here. So out the get go, you can see we have a bunch of subcategories here. We got a bunch of models that we can download and import. We got different kinds of food assets, cars, scooters. Uh, we got people. We've got furniture, okay? And all of these assets you can download and import into your scenes real quickly. And again, it's not just 3D models. You've got materials in here as well. So you have access to a bunch of awesome looking materials in here. And then you also have access to a bunch of HDRIs as well. All right. So that's what Chaos Cosmos is. It's a sophisticated library of smart V-Ray assets that you can really easily download and import to your scenes. So now let's talk about how you do that. Let's talk about how you can use Chaos Cosmos. Let's say, for example, we wanted to import a material. So we're going to go under the material category. We're going to go under the wood subcategory, for example, because we want to uh, work with a wood material. Then let's say that we like this uh, wood L material right here. If we want to see it up close, we can just click on this material preview. There we go. We're going to see it in a bit of a bigger format. We can also get additional info for it. So we can very quickly learn what the texture resolution is, what the dimensions are and how big the asset actually is. All right. Okay. Now to import this material into our scene, we first need to download it and we can download it by pressing this little download button here. As soon as you do that, this asset is going to begin downloading to your computer. And this process can be really fast but it does depend on your internet speed and of course your location as well. But just between you and me, the downloads are really speedy. Okay. So now that the asset is downloaded, we can import it by clicking this import button right here. So as soon as we click it, look at that, the asset is imported into our scene and voila, here it is. All right, now if you click on it, you can see that this is just your regular V-Ray material. You can come in here and you can edit all of its parameters, just like you would on a uh, V-Ray material that you created, okay? So you can really do anything with it. This is just a normal V-Ray material that someone else <laughs> already created for you, essentially. All right, okay, so that's how you import materials. Let's, for example, let's delete this wood material because we aren't really gonna need it. Uh, if you wanted to import HDRIs, you can very easily do that. So let's uh, let's download the Studio 03 HDRI, okay? Give it a second to download, and then we can import it into our scene. Now, because this is an HDRI, it's gonna uh, import in our scene here as a V-Ray dome light object. So uh, the HDRI itself is already going to be plugged into a V-Ray dome light, so it's already lighting up your scene, as you can see. All right, so. The, now, this means that it's very easy to try out all kinds of different lighting scenarios by just downloading and importing an HDRI. And it's already going to come in as a very dome light. And, uh, you know, <laughs> your scene will already be lit by it. Okay, that's how HDRIs work. But now you also have 3D models in here. How do 3D models import? Much the same way, really. So let's say, for example, we wanted to bring in a, a lighting fixture that we're going to place uh near our sofa so maybe on the left side here we would you know we would go under the lighting subcategory and then we would just locate the asset that we like which in my case is going to be this lamp floor 001 asset 
we're just going to import it just like that. And it's in our scene, right? Uh, now you'll also notice because this is an asset, it comes with uh, its materials applied on it. And that's exactly how it's going to be imported into your scene as well. So it already has materials applied. As you can see, they're right here. And again, you can freely edit them however you wish. These are your standard V-Ray materials here. All right. Okay, cool. Now, uh, if we focus on the browser, on the Chaos browser here for just a little bit more, well, if you're, for example, really enthusiastic about a certain asset, okay, it can be material or uh, an HDRI or whatever, if you really like it, you can favorite it. You can give it a like, essentially, by clicking on this little heart icon here, and then it's going to reside under your liked menu here, if you will. All right, and if you don't like it anymore, you can always unlike it and your likes menu is going to update. Furthermore, if you're, for example, working on a mobile internet connection, those are typically data capped and you don't want to um, browse these assets that you can only download because you haven't downloaded them previously. Well, in that case, you can choose to only browse the assets that you've previously downloaded. So you can do that by hopping under the downloaded menu here. And in here, you're just going to see the assets that you've already downloaded. Okay, so that, that can be really useful, especially for all of you that have data caps on your internet connections. Then you can also filter your assets by color or by space. In our case here, because we're dealing with 3D models, uh, you can filter them by the surface upon which they're placed. Okay, and all that nice stuff. So you got some filters available to you here that can be really, really useful. Now, we did mention that all of these assets first need to be downloaded onto your computer. Where are they downloaded? Well, if you click on the little settings button here, and if you go under settings, you're going to see that in here, you have your asset download folder. So this is the folder where all of these Cosmos assets are going to get downloaded to. So if you're ever, you know, going from one machine to another and you want to bring all of these assets with you instead of having them have to be downloaded again, you can just copy the contents of this folder to your other computer. And then in that other computer's Chaos Cosmos, you just point to whatever directory you place those assets in, right? Furthermore, if you're working in a larger team, well, then this is also the place where you would set where all of these assets would get downloaded. And that's especially important if you're using shared drives. Okay, so you can change all of that through this asset download folder here. Okay, okay, cool. So that's pretty much it about the Chaos Bro Browser. You now know how to use it like a pro, okay? So um, let's focus on our little scene here now, okay? So we've already imported this little asset here, but as you can see, you know, it came in with, with no materials essentially, but that's not true because, you know, we have materials applied to it. It's just that we're using material overrides here. So let's stop the interactive renderer. Let's disable the material overrides as a whole. Okay, I don't think we'll be needing them anymore. And then let's restart the interactive renderer. Now, while the renderer is restarting, let's also tidy up our scene. Not scene, but our materials here a little bit. So let's select all of these lamp floor materials and let's just add them to their own layer. And this is just my own way uh, of organizing things. I always like to keep things tidy. You know, if you do it in any other way, that's fine too. This is just how I like to approach things here. Okay. Okay. Now <laughs> our interactive render looks all weird. What's happening? Well, we imported a light asset, right? And lights typically have lights in them. So if we expand on our uh, Cosmos asset here, you're going to see that underneath it, we have a V-Ray light nested and the light is actually inside the little light bulb here. Okay. And that's, that's really good because now, now we don't need to create a V-Ray light on our own and we don't need to place it in the middle of this uh, light bulb here. It's already there. It came imported like that, which is great, but obviously because we're not totally happy with the lighting situation here, we will tweak that light a little bit. So we're going to lower its intensity. I'm just going to lower it to a value that I know is going to work. And then if we look uh, at the asset a little bit closer, okay, um, well, you're not going to see it from here, but sometimes because this is a V-Ray light, you might actually see it 
physically. Okay, so if we just move it out here, you can see that it's a physical, sort of physically visible light. And we don't necessarily want that, so let's undo that move. And let's just toggle this invisible parameter to on here. So now that light is going to be invisible. If we if we bring it forward again, you can see that we just can't see it. We can just see the light that it made. Okay, and that's going to be great for us here because we don't really want to see that sphere on the inside of our uh, of our lighting fixture here of our light bulb. Okay, okay. So now let's place the lamp floor where I think it should be placed. So let's place it to the left side of the sofa here. So kind of like this. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good as it is. All right. So that kind of takes care of that lamp there. Let's uh, let's import some additional assets here. So let's bring up Chaos, uh, the Chaos Cosmos browser. Let's go under 3D models. And how about we bring in some heavy duty assets? Okay, some really heavy models that have a lot of polygons. So let's bring in some car models. Okay. And um, I know we're dealing with an interior, but uh, we're going to turn these cars into uh, toy cars. Okay. So as you can see, uh, these are the cars that I've kind of uh, chosen here. So let's just import them and do notice how quick they're going to be to import just like that, you know, and these are car assets. These are sort of, um, you know, production assets that are, you know, they're, they're not just three polygons welded together. There, there's a lot more polygons on them, but as you can see, they, they imported really quickly. And that's why Chaos Cosmos is such, it's just so fun to use. Things just really import quickly and well, right? Right. Next thing that I want to do here is I'm just going to scale down these cars to about 5% of their original size. So that's car number one. And this is car number two. Now where we're going to put these cars, well, these are supposed to be toy cars. So let's, uh, let's, let's make things a little bit more messy. Let's just place them in front of the sofa here. Like, I don't know, like some kid was playing with them. All right. There we go. Something like that. Let's just, let's see how that'll look like. Let's leave them in for now. Now, if we take a look, if we take a closer look at the car assets here, you're going to see that they're not very detailed while, you know, uh, they are very detailed in the, in the interactive render. That is because by default, Cosmos assets are going to import with their, um, preview setting set to preview geometry. And this is because we don't want to overload your viewport whenever you're importing stuff. So this way, the viewport is going to stay a little bit more responsive, especially if you have a ton of assets in there. Okay. But in our case here, this is a very simple scene. So how about we play around with the preview setting here a little bit? So uh, we could have it be set to bounding boxes, for example, which is pretty cool, but not really what we want. Or we could, you know, also set the preview to be set to full geometry. And just like that, look at that. We have the actual model in front of us. All right. Okay. Let's do the same for the other car, just full geometry, just because, you know, we're working in a very simple scene here. We don't have a ton of assets. And as you can see, the viewport is super responsive nonetheless. Okay. Now uh, let's talk about importing a curtain asset that we're going to place on the right side of the sofa here. Okay. So again, we're going to leverage chaos cosmos here. We're just going to type in curtain. As you can see, I already did that in the past, in, in one of my previous attempts. And, um, yeah, let's just import a curtain asset just like that. It's in right. Super fun, super easy to use. So now let's position it to where we want it to be. So on the right side of the sofa, we can push it a little bit against this wall, not too much. And then. You know, we kind of mentioned this in, in the previous tutorial, we do want to cover up this wall intersection here, right? So let's just do that. Let's move this curtain a little bit more to the left here, Maybe just a little bit more. And there we go. That's simple. But uh, if you take a look at the viewport, uh, things are not really looking that great. I mean, obviously we can cheat like this, but this is kind of not not looking very very cool because we have this curtain asset intersecting with the architecture and with the shadow plane and with the whole world really so uh, let's tidy things up a little bit shall we as you can see right now currently if we go into the polygon mode now we can't select any of the polygons of our curtains here so that that's not that fun is it 
But what we can do here is we can select the Curtain Cosmos asset and we can hit C on our keyboard. So we make it editable. All right. Now we're going to end up with a V-Ray proxy. And a V-Ray proxy is a really useful thing if you need it, but we don't. And we still don't have access to the polygons of this mesh. So what we're going to do again here is we're going to again make things editable. So we're going to hit C on our keyboard. And now look at this. We have access to the actual mesh of these curtains, right? So we have access to all the polygons and we can select things, move them around, sculpt them, whatever we want to do with them, right? So it's that easy. You just need to make things editable. And so now what we can do is we can just get rid of this top part here. I don't think we'll need it. Definitely don't see it in the interactive render from our main angle. And then we can also get rid of this middle curtain here. We don't need that one either. But now, as you'll notice, you know, we're going to be left with a single asset, but the single asset has both of these curtains kind of in it, right? So what we can do now is we can go into the polygon mode and we can just select these polygons that we don't need. So this entire curtain on the right side here, we delete it and there we go. How about that? It was that easy. We can just tidy things up here in the object manager and look at that, you know, we've kind of pretty much fleshed out the entire scene here. Now, obviously we'll want to rework some of the materials, make them look a little bit different, a little bit more the way we want to. And then we will also place in some additional lights. Maybe we're even going to import some additional assets. We'll see. But obviously things are really starting to come together and things are just going to snowball from here. All right. All right. Cool. Now, before we conclude this tutorial, one more thing that we ought to do here to make things a little bit more professional. Uh, we got, or I got a little bit overexcited when we demoed the import process for the uh, Chaos Cosmos assets here. As you've noticed, uh, we haven't created layers for any of these imported materials. And that's kind of, that's fine if you like to work like this, but I really like to keep things tidy. So uh, let's first make sure that all of the curtain assets here are nested under their own layer. So let's just call this layer curtains 001, just like that asset is called. And then let's do the same with the car materials here. So these are these folks right here. Let's just call them cars. All right. Okay. And with that, we're concluding this tutorial. Thank you for tuning in. We're really hopeful that you got hyped up about Chaos Cosmos here. And obviously, we also hope you've learned how to use it and uh, how it works. And so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.